I better turn this music off. I don't want the cops on me. How are you folks? It's Saturday, the July 9th, and I'm coming at you. Just feels like just feels like it. It's been a really wonderful uh, week. And uh, just generally speaking, in spite of all the turmoil and shit going on in the world, including in my life, days are good. I'm enjoying life. Are you? I surely hope so. Hope things are going okay for you folks. Um, if you haven't watched the last video where I had the chat with uh, my sister Adrian and brother-in-law Floyd Norman, please watch it. It was, a, it was a delight to spend some time with them. I do truly love my family very much and um, so pa so happy when my sister met Floyd because this, that's her second husband. Her first husband was uh, did not meet my approval as a, as a human being. He was trash. So it's Saturday here. It's very humid, but the temperature is better today, so that's nice. I thought the very least I could do is come on and show. Um, Rebecca, what I, um, her, um, birthday gift certificate, I'll show what I got, but what I was playing at the beginning here was, uh, a track off of this album, Players, very generic, un, uh, to me a very uninteresting graphic to this cover. And I personally always thought that this, in a way, was these people shooting themselves in the foot by downplaying the importance of presentation, thinking it's all about the music. Well, it is, but this, this cover is tasteless and gives no indication of the fact that this is really quite good musically, uh, compositional-wise, and especially playing-wise. All the guys on here are great players. Um, Steve Smith on drums. Uh, T. Labitz, is that how you say his name? Yeah, uh, on keyboards, originally from Dixie Dregs. Um, Jeff Berlin, bass, you all know him. And a particular interest to me on here is Scott Henderson's guitar playing. That's what we were just listening to. He's a great, great musician and teacher. Um, I see where he is... Um, I see some of his stuff online. He's a good good teacher, has a good approach. Um, today is one of my favorites. I have a lot of favorites, but truly one of my favorite and inspiring musicians, Haromi Hosono from Japan. Today is his birthday. He's in his 80s. We're all getting up there. But um, last night I listened to this whole album, Phil Harmony. Um, when I first started to get into YMO and started to collect them, this was one of the first solo albums of the group that I was able to obtain in 80s, 82. I got it when it came out. And it was it was mind-blowing then, and, and it's still um, in a class of its own, if you haven't heard this album. This is... Hosono is like, in so many ways, he's the godfather of America, of Japanese... Um, pop and rock music he was in there from like he's been in there since the 60s and um i consider him a pioneer of, of modern electronic music along with you know the, the bands like Kraftwerk, and then of course i know my history and go further back but as far as the people that really inspired techno and detroit with detroit germany and japan they all go together in my mind especially when you look at the timeline of events. So, I got... Thank you again, Rebecca, and thank you all, everyone in general, thank you, for your kindness. Just literally, you know, I don't count, but it's just obvious by the numbers, you know, from the different plat platforms. You know, again, over a thousand um, birthday wishes. It's just, you know stunning but that's why I share the way I share and stand fast in the face of ignorance and um, 
and negative um, broken behavior, you know, uh, this is good energy over here, okay? There is just, we've got to address stupidity and, um, yeah, we just got to address it. So, what did I get? A reissue of Vashti Bunyan's album, Another Diamond Day. Vashti's story is well known. If you know the story of rock music, you know, she set out on the road with a horse and a buggy and was going to try to um, do that thing, go on the road. And uh, one thing led to the next, and she made this album with basically the incredible string band backing her. I really like the the feel of how she sings, the simplicity of these songs, most of the words. It's just where it takes me. It doesn't take me to the club or out with some drinks. It takes me away and it allows me to dream up magical thoughts and places while I listen to stuff like this. That's why I like folky type music and the English and the European um, element. Because of that, it's, you know, it, I can use it to take myself wherever I want to in, in my imagination. I got two other albums. I collect library music to a degree, in particular, certain artists. Piero, Piero Umiliani is one of them, Italian uh, composer of soundtracks and library music. And so I picked up this brand new um, reissue of Prehistoria. And this one is not electronic. It, it's, for the most part, it's, it's um, ensemble. I love his writing and the variety. He seemed he seemed to have a really large scope of imagination when it came to the music that he could come up with. Just so and then so and then I got this one, Continente Nero. This one I like even better. Not again, not electronic necessarily. See what it says: background music really sweet compositions so those are the records that I got with my um, with the help of the uh, gift certificate thank you so much other music that's been playing because I have been having just a really wonderful days I appreciate the friends who stopped by and spent time with me on my birthday um, I know some exceptional people, I do. And I also, some of my friends, it's like, you know, some people don't quite understand me, you know, but I just, um, I know where I'm coming from, so I just continue to be direct and straight with these folks, you know, saying, you just, you know, you'll, you'll understand or try to understand. I'll even be, you know, you could say rude and say, come on, catch up. But that's what I'm feeling. You know, come on, open up, wake up, catch up. You know, get a bit broader perspective. Ryuichi Sakamoto is on my mind, so I hope he's having good days. And I listen to this all the way through. I haven't seen the movie. But Sakamoto is a, a master of, like I said it many times, creating a mood and atmosphere encapsulating moments in melody and chord the staggering girl and this is uh, on a beautiful green vinyl I am not even interested in seeing the movie quite frankly sometimes so the movies are so intense you know it's like oh, no, I don't I don't really want to see this drama I just love the way it's interpreted through Sakamoto's music. So no, I don't even necessarily need to see that movie. Let me pull this because it's, yeah, as I'm talking about him, 
I had also played this, and I think I showed it the other day, but I'll show it again. I just love this album, and it's a it's both sides of Sakamoto. It's the commercial side, the pop side, well, several sides, pop and the avant-garde, all in one album. Fantastic. Early 2000s, I got to open for this band, Mountain Banana, my band in Dreama. Well, not my band, but a band I was in, in Dreama. We played a show with Mountain Banana. What a blast it was. They were so much fun. Uh, Teeny Shiny is this album with e Free the Bee. What a what an interesting approach because it's got the franticness of punk, but there's also this funkiness, really scratchy, scrunky funk to this music, and um, I forget her name. I've met her, you know. Her voice is like like nothing else. It's like a yelp. It's like an animal. It's <laughs> very strange. Pulled this and played this a couple times recently as I am really pleased to find out that in October Black Midi is coming to Omaha. They have a new album coming out apparently next next week. But Cavalcade, this is a work of art. Very art. It's very much art. And the there's I don't bother to try to find them all, but there's obviously a lot of literal references and literary references in the lyrics. But the music is dynamic and fantastic. Something led to me playing this, mainly side two of the Beatles' Magical Mystery Tour. Hey, Stephanie, I think of you right away when I think of the, when I play Beatles. Side two of this is what I really like, and Baby, You're a Rich Man has kind of risen to the top of the heap of like that's an overlooked song so it's it's really a cool track this is the uh remastered or whatever they redumped whatever they did to it it's a very nice package and it sounds great is there anything else i haven't shown yes kevin peak what the band was he in i'd have to look it up is it barclay james harvest or somebody like that um, he has done library music, it turns out. And this is um, lumped in there, even though it's a commercial release of his, Awakening, 1981. Instrumental um, in the Mike Oldfield territory of instrumental albums. Um, comparatively, I like, probably like this one. A little more overall. I just... Um, frankly got rid of a bunch of Mike Oldfield records because I never listened to them. I kept Tubular Bells and Omadon for a number of reasons besides listening, but um, Kevin Peake, if you like Mike Oldfield and haven't heard Kevin Peake, listen to him. And a few days ago I was getting into this. This is kind of where uh, Stereo Lab is at a point where they're kind of repeating themselves um, like a lot. I like their approach, and so um, Sound Dust. Overall, I enjoy this, but then as I'm listening to it, I start to hear where it's like, hmm, sounds like somebody's kind of running out of steam here. Um, they're back at it, and I haven't heard the latest. I know they're going on tour or are out on tour. I've seen them two twice, and they were great. So I enjoyed this, but I had to make those comments. And let's see, everything else here I've shown. Yes, I have. Okay. So, if you follow me on other social media, you know that there's a consistency of, about what I say and where I'm coming from. So my message today is a little kindness can go a long way. Let's all do our part. And I will continue to challenge folks who for some, who for whatever, whatever broken, wrong reason, they feel the need to be uh, unhelpful with their presence, the things they say, and how they treat people. I'll continue to appeal to you, you know, to take another look at yourself and ask yourself, what is going on with you? Look at this world. You know, 
how could you be helpful? How can you help instead of being part of the problem? This is another thing that I understood a long time ago and is good knowledge. By merely existing, I am part of the problem. So I consciously decide to do things to be less of a problem. You know, I say problem because it's a challenge for us to socially live together harmoniously. And as you see, we're in a quagmire. Uh, internationally, you look at thing, events, you know, it's just rough times. And so I will continue to say each one of us can do our part in changing that. And I, I can just see no defense for negative, divisive, uh, sexist, racist behavior. Um, there's a lot of it going around and it just doesn't make any sense to me. So that's why I just keep talking like this, you know what I mean? Um, I hear people with good hearts and good intentions making a lot of sense. I listen to the, the people I call fools. I listen for, for sense in what they're saying and where they're coming from. And I hear none. It's just very distorted and selfish. So, so be a part of the solution, please. We can work together on this, okay? We can.